I am out fishing for herring today, and you can find herring throughout Puget Sound year round in the deeper waters, but to fish for them usually requires a boat. Sometimes you can fish for them from the piers, but once a year they come into the shallower subtidal and intertidal waters to spawn, and you can fish for them from the shore. So that is what we are going to do today. The actual spawning may only occur over two to three days. You'll know that it's happening because you'll see this huge increase in bird and seal activity. Okay, let's catch some herring. Just got this uh, sabiki rig. Real simple. Pretty, pretty fish. These are nice and big. They're good sized herring. And the herring in Puget Sound are kind of unique in that each of these different spawning locations belongs to a specific substock almost. Each of these independent spawning populations spawns at different peak times within that period between January and April, usually. Oh, there's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Supposedly, they don't feed from the start of this migration through the time that they spawn, but a lot of the fish that I hooked today were hooked in or near the mouth, so who knows. Unlike salmon, herring don't die after spawning, so these herring out here will have reached sexual maturity around two to three years of age. And the Puget Sound herring don't usually live beyond five years old. The herring don't necessarily return to spawn uh, at their natal sites where they themselves are born. They're more social learners. So generally these schools of adults and juveniles will remain separate and the schools of the juvenile herring will follow schools of adults to a spawning site that first year. But once they've selected a spawning site, the fish will remain loyal to that site, returning to spawn there year after year. They'll join the adult schools and stick together with that location's breeding stock, even in the non-breeding season, when the fish are out in those deeper waters feeding. The herring will deposit their eggs on the eelgrass and then return to their summer feeding areas in deeper waters. Those adhesive eggs that are deposited in the intertidal and subtidal eelgrass and algae areas are usually at a depth of less than 30 or 40 feet. At this beach, the eggs were in less than 20 feet of water. 
these eggs are going to hatch in just 14 days. The juvenile herring will emerge into the nearshore areas right around the same time that juvenile salmon are migrating from freshwater to saltwater and hanging out in those same estuaries where the juvenile herring are. That's a really cool ecological relationship there because as these baby salmon are hitting the saltwater and looking for food, they're finding all of these recently emerged juvenile herring in these estuaries, bays, and inlets. So we just caught a handful of herring today. We didn't eat that many because we're just going to use them for bait, but you could easily catch a lot of herring just fishing from shore if you get out here while they're spawning. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I appreciate you all so much and I've got a lot of big plans for the rest of the year. I know I have some requests for specific videos like gaper clams and trout and more salmon and more crustacean type stuff and then also squid, more squid, I know. Um, I can't wait for a squid season to get here again and I'll put out all the squid videos. But until then, let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you'd like to see more of. Thanks so much.